GeoTab Drive is an app for hours of service, DVIR, messaging, and more. Each section of the app can be used individually, or all can be available for use. Tap the icon to start the GeoTab Drive app. Enter your username and password. If you have any questions on this, please ask your manager. Select Login when complete. The app will now sync and pull the last 14 days of HOS logs, shipments, DVIRs, and trailer attachments onto the mobile device. You can now select your vehicle. The last vehicle you used is currently listed. You can either select this vehicle or you can choose Select Another Vehicle and select it from a list of nearby vehicles. Here, we will continue with the last used vehicle by pressing Continue. If you have a trailer, you can continue with the current one listed, if there is one listed, or you can select Attach Another Trailer and select the trailer from that list. If you have a new trailer that isn't in the list, select the New button. You can also search for the trailer by entering in all or part of the trailer name, and then select it from the list. If you have more than one trailer, you can add those also. Touch the Continue button when complete. Verify Logs now displays if you have any logs from a previous day that have not been electronically signed off. Review the logs and select Verify on each day or Verify All if there are more than one displayed. You are now prompted to certify that these logs are correct. Select the Agree button to certify. Displayed next is any unassigned logs, if there are any for your vehicle. Unassigned logs are created if your vehicle has been moved and no one was logged in. Select the logs that belong to you by individually selecting, and then at the bottom, select Assign to Me. If all these logs do not belong to you, select Skip to continue. Displayed next is the DVIR inspection screen. Press the Inspect button to start a DVIR or skip if a DVIR is not required. Please follow your company regulations. You will be notified on screen that you have been placed on duty. Start by inspecting the previous DVIR for your vehicle and note any defects that were found and who the repair was made by. In this case, there are no defects. Scroll down through the inspection and note any remarks if needed, and then you must select Certify Previous Inspection to verify you have read the previous inspection. You are now ready to do a new inspection. Do your walk around and note any parts on the vehicle that may need repair. If there are no defects, simply touch the No Defects button. If there is any part that needs attention, select that part and select the defect. Here we have no defects. Sign your DVIR report by selecting Yes that you certify the vehicles were inspected in compliance with the regional and or federal regulations. You can now repeat the DVIR report with the trailer. Select Inspect. Review the previous DVIR for the trailer. Note that in this case there are no defects. Scroll down to the bottom and certify that you have read the report. Now do your walk around for the trailer and note any parts on the trailer that may need repair by selecting the part and choosing the needed repair or select No Defects if there are no defects to report. In this case we will select No Defects. Certify that you have inspected the trailer by selecting Yes. You are now on the main dashboard for GeoTab Drive. The buttons available here are HOS, DVIR, Messages, Assets or Trucks and Trailers, and Settings. You also have an easy navigation menu in the top left corner which will allow you to move between all of these options. At the top right corner is your name or person icon. Pressing this allows you to log out or add a driver for team drivers or co-drivers. Up to three can be logged into the app. Beside your name is an envelope or notification icon which displays any new messages or updates. 
Beside the notifications is an information button, which shows you all of your connections. Your vehicle is connected, Geotab Drive is connected, and GPS is connected. If any of these are not connected, they are displayed in red. Let's start with hours of service from your dashboard. You can see here that you are on duty, which is from your DBIR inspection you just completed. The app puts you on duty as soon as you start the DBIR. Select the HOS button to enter into your HOS screen. Hours of service is split up into four different tabs. Status, Graph, Logs, and Options. The Status tab displayed now shows the statuses in your rule set and the time available in each status. The top bar displays the maximum amount of time that you have left to drive at this moment. You can see here how much time you have available to you in regards to your limits. Here, there is 4 hours and 9 minutes before a rest break. Driving time available is 10 hours and 37 minutes. Workday left is 10 hours and 9 minutes. And the cycle left is 56 hours and 34 minutes. To change a status, Simply press one of the buttons. If going off duty, press off. There is now a new line on the left status display, which shows rest duration. This counts up to show how much time you have spent in an off duty status. If a 30 minute rest break is required, wait until the count for rest duration has reached 30 before driving again. The blue bar shows the maximum amount of time available to drive which here is currently 4 hours and 8 minutes. Some status changes happen automatically, depending on what you are doing. Once you start driving over 5 miles per hour, the status automatically changes to drive. Once the vehicle stops for more than 5 minutes, the status changes back to on duty. The drive and on duty are the only two automatic status changes in the drive app. The other statuses, such as off-duty and sleeper berth, must be manually selected. The Graph tab is next, which displays your duty status logs, much like paper logs. On the left is your status, and on the right you will see a total summary of time spent in each status for a 24-hour period. Using the navigation arrows, scroll through the last 7 or 8 days of logs, depending on your rule set. This shows the status graph of each day as you flip through. The odometer reading appears at the bottom for each day and for each vehicle driven in that day. A red line appears if you have driven in violation. A yellow bar indicates any logs that have been changed or edited. A green bar will show the logs that have been verified or signed off on. And a gray bar indicates that the log has not yet been verified. The next tab is Logs. This displays all of the logs from the graph in a text format. The date and time, the location, time spent in the status, and summary of miles driven for the day are all displayed. Note, the on-duty log was created when the pre-trip DVIR was completed and an automatic comment was entered as pre-trip. Now scroll down to display all your logs for the previous seven or eight days and messages noting any violations shown in red. Note, these displays are only for you. Any roadside inspection will not see these messages. Beside any day where you have unverified logs, a Verify button is displayed. Once you have reviewed the logs, select Verify, which is the equivalent of signing off on your paper logs with an electronic signature. Then select Agree to certify that these logs are accurate and correct. You will see this now says Verified. If you need to add a log, simply press the Add Log button. Select the status to add, like On Duty. Add the date and time, and then add a required annotation, which is a comment stating why you are adding the log. You can now see that this is part of the duty status logs with the added comment. You also now have a verify button. Please ensure you verify your logs at the end of every day, which you are asked to do when you log out. 
If you need to edit a log, press the log to be changed and you will see a pencil icon beside each field where you are allowed to make an edit. Note, you cannot change any drive log or any time which will change the drive log. Drive logs are created automatically as the vehicle moves. These cannot be changed to adjust this time. An annotation or comment is required stating why the log has been edited. If you have any malfunctions or diagnostic events, these will be shown here. You can refer to the malfunctions and diagnostic guide if there are any issues and clear if necessary. In this case, there are no malfunctions. The last tab is Options. Here you can apply any exemptions available to you, such as adverse driving conditions, yard move, or personal conveyance. All of these plus more or less may be shown. Selecting the yard move and entering an annotation, giving a reason for the move, and then selecting apply initiates this exemption. Navigating back to the status tab, you can see yard move is currently active. Navigating to the logs tab, you can see the current status is yard move with the explanation. Returning to the options tab, select the stop button when you have completed the move. If you have personal use available to you, this is selected similar to a yard move. For a roadside inspection, scroll to the bottom and you will see two options, Transfer and Generate. To transfer your logs to the officer, select the Transfer button. Enter a comment if requested, and then select Email or Web Services, depending on which the officer chooses. Your other option is the Generate button which will display the logs on screen as a compliance report. This report is to show to an officer in a roadside inspection. Scrolling down through the report displays the relevant information for the day, as well as the graph and the logs. Any unassigned logs for this vehicle will be displayed at the bottom for each day. Note, there are no violations displayed in this report. This report displays all the required information to show the DOT officer, so you only need to generate this report and display each day to the inspector by scrolling down. Scrolling through the days by pressing the back arrow at the top of the report displays the last seven or eight days, depending on the rule set you use. To return from the compliance report, simply select one of the tabs, like Options or Status. At the end of your day, you now need to log out of the app. Select your name or the person icon at the top and select Log Out. You are now prompted to do a DVIR at the end of your day. Select Inspect and review the last DVIR that was completed for this vehicle. Certify the previous inspection and then continue to complete your new report doing your walk around and noting any defects that require attention. If there are no defects, select No Defects and certify this inspection is in accordance with regulations. Continue to do a DVIR for your trailer if attached by selecting Inspect and then reviewing the previous DVIR. Select Certify the previous inspection, then start your walk around for the trailer, noting any defects that require attention. Here let's select Tires. They seem to be leaking some air and will need to be checked. Enter an annotation and then select Done when complete. Sign the report by selecting Yes to inspecting the vehicle by regulation. If you have any unverified logs, you will be prompted to sign off on these logs. Review the logs to be verified and select the Verify button at the top of each day or review all logs for all days and select Verify All Days. You will now be prompted to certify that all these logs are correct and true. Select Agree to continue. The next prompt is to update your status before logging out. If you are finished your shift for the day, select Off Duty. If you have other tasks to perform, select On Duty. Or if you are going to log out of the app and go to the sleeper berth, Select Sleeper Berth. Off Duty is selected here. Finally, select Set New Status. 
Logging out is now syncing your logs, and your logout is complete.